Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We gather as one community around the table of the Lord on this third day of the octave of Christmas, the feast of St. John the Evangelist. We pray that we may fully understand the story of Christmas, not only staring at the baby in the manger, but also understanding the beauty of the empty tomb. And so let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on, on earth, earth, peace, peace to people, people of goodwill. Will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the blessed Apostle John have unlocked for us the secrets of your word, grant, we pray, that we may grasp with proper understanding 
what He has so marvelously brought to our ears. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, our Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the beginning of the first letter of St. John. Beloved, what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we looked upon and touched with our hands, concerns the word of life. For the life was made visible. We have seen it and testify to it and proclaim to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was made visible to us. What we have seen and heard, we proclaim now to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us. For our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing this so that our joy may be complete. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. The Lord is King. Let the earth rejoice. Let the many isles be glad. Clouds and darkness are around him. Justice and judgment are the foundation of his throne. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his justice, and all peoples see his glory. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. Light dawns for the just, and gladness for the upright of heart. Be glad in the Lord, you just, and give thanks to his holy name. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. Please stand. We acclaim you as Lord. The glorious company of apostles praise you. with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to john glory to you o lord on the first day of the week mary magdalene ran and went to and re, ran and went to simon peter and to the other disciple whom jesus loved and told them they have taken the lord from the tomb and we do not know where they put him so Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, 
he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Two days after Christmas, we celebrate the feast of St. John the Evangelist. And after hearing the story of the birth of our Lord on Christmas Day, this third day in the octave of Christmas, we hear a resurrection story. Parang anticlimactic yung ebanghelyo natin ngayong araw. Nung isang araw lang, yung kwento ng mga nagmamadaling pastol na makita si Jesus sa sabsaban yung narinig natin. Nung nakarang araw, ang narinig natin yung mga anghel na umaawit ng papuri sa Diyos sa kaitaasan. Kwento ng pagkapanganak ni Jesus. Pero pagkatapos ngayon ng ikatlong araw, ang narinig naman natin ay kwento ng muling pagkabuhay. Kwento ng isang libing ang walang laman. Our gospel for today would seem out of place. It would be it would be more appropriate to hear it during the Easter season, which we also hearing which we also hear it during those days. But why is it that three days in the octave of Christmas, we now focus our attention to the empty tomb? Simply because the empty tomb completes the Christmas story. Madali hong mamangha sa ganda ng Belen. Pero namamangha din ba tayo sa ganda ng isang libingang walang laman? And this is precisely the whole story of Christmas. From the manger to the cross to the empty tomb. That is the full circle of the Christmas story. From the baby in the manger that ends in the empty tomb. But what would be the relation of the empty tomb to the Christmas manger? Ngayong mga panahon ho na ito, ninanamnam pa natin yung mga palamuti sa paligid Siguro natapos na yung pagod sa mga pamimili ng mga pangregalo sa pagsisetup ng mga Christmas decors. Nandun na tayo sa ninanamnam yung mga regalong natanggap at namamangha sa mga ilaw ng Pasko. But what comes after that? Maybe we can say that we just share the joy of Christmas. That even if we may find ourselves in a difficult situation, we try to give a big sigh and just say, Pasko ngayon, Merry Christmas. Mahirap isipin na mapipinta yung mga mukha natin na parang Bierne Santo samantalang nagsasayang iba. That is what society would dictate. But our gospel today would bring us back to the true meaning of Christmas. Hindi masama na maglagay ng Christmas decors hindi masama na magsaya at mag-enjoy ngayong panahon na ito. But the true meaning of the joy of Christmas is not manifested in the Christmas decors. It is not in the gifts that we have received and unwrapped. The true meaning of the joy of Christmas is seeing how we can empty ourselves so that others can be filled. Would that be in the, numbers, would that be in the number of gifts that we have given? Maybe not. It will just be a fraction of it. Because the ultimate standard that will be given to us is the empty tomb. Yes, it begins with the baby in the manger, but that baby would also be crucified on the cross, be buried in a stranger's tomb, and that baby in the manger would fully show his glory in the empty tomb. 
let us not just be mesmerized with the beauty of the manger, with the cuteness of the baby Jesus in it. We have only just begun. Our journey has commenced, but it will end in the beauty and the glory of the empty tomb. Please stand. John was called the beloved disciple because he was the faithful one close to the heart of Christ. Let us pray through the incarnate to the incarnate God revealed in his gospel, the word who is life. For every intention we will say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church may be zealous in her apostolic mission and trusted to her by Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That we may strive to conform our wills to that of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That like St. John, we may have a deep knowledge of Jesus by studying the truths of our faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may have the courage to follow Christ to the cross and to the empty tomb. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may share in, ja in St. John's gentle love for Our Lady. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, we lift up to the Lord our personal intentions. Remembering all the people are asking for our prayers and for all the people whom we promised to pray for. Father of the Word incarnate, as we rejoice in your Son's birth, hear these prayers we make in union with the, with the beloved disciple, our model in Christian life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Sanctify the offerings we have made, O Lord, we pray, and grant that from the banquet of this supper we may draw the hidden wisdom of the eternal word, just as from the same source you revealed it to your Apostle John, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We we'll lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone 
upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in Him God made visible, we may be caught up through Him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed the holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At that time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Stand. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. John, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, 
and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Word made flesh. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. For Lord, I am I not worthy that you should enter, enter under, under my roof, but, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. healed. The Body of Christ. Amen.
please stand. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that the Word made flesh, proclaimed by the blessed Apostle John, may, through this mystery which we have celebrated, ever dwell among us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Holy Mother of our Savior, the Spirit dwells in you. Oh, how great is your beauty and the grace bestowed on you. Holy Mother of our Savior, blessed are you. From among all we men, God has chosen you.